Have you ever been in love? And I don't mean just in love, I mean truly in love. You cannot wait to see every day. You cannot wait to go to bed with them. You laugh at everything they say. Life just feels better when they're in the world with you. That kind of in love. But you probably aren't in love with your car, right? Because that, that would be crazy. <laughs> 10 years ago, there was this dude called Nathaniel who fell in love with his car. Didn't TLC My Strange Addiction pick that up? Gave us the greatest cringe video of all time. And we never heard from him again. Did he marry the car? Do they have little car babies when he watches cars? Is that considered like an adult movie to him? I don't There's so many questions that were left unanswered. And today I'm proud to say after 10 years, TLC has decided to revisit him and he's still going. Except the true love of his life, his car, is no longer with him. But there is one surprise. And today we're gonna deep dive onto Nathaniel, the guy who fell in love with his car. And we're gonna take a 10 year journey and look at his life. I cannot believe they actually documented his life for that long. I didn't even know he still existed. But when I saw the show was there, I had to take a look at it. And thank you, by the way, uh, one of my subscribers gave me the idea for the show. If you're not subscribed, maybe you should fall in love with your car. Bitch. So how about you subscribe and then you can give me great ideas like this. I can't believe that I'm watching this, but today we are going to deep dive, take a look at the guy who fell in love with this car, Nathaniel. I want to start off by saying I tried to do some research on him, but he is very hot and almost impossible to find other than the show. Honestly, I don't know how they find the people here. The best I could do was look at him when he started and when he was 29 to now when he's 39. And we'll take a look and see if anything's changed. So this is Nathaniel at 29 when he falls in love with this car called Chase, which is a very ironically funny thing that the car is called Chase. It's like calling your car speed, or maybe if you're someone who drives your car, calling yourself Vin Diesel. It's hilarious. My name is Nathaniel, I'm 27 years old. He looks like a Nathaniel, doesn't he? My name's Nathaniel, I'm 27 years old. Um, just Nathaniel living out in the countryside, doing country things. If he's out in the countryside, does is he in love with, like, is tractors sexy? I it's not a question I ever thought I would ask anyone. Is tractors sexy? Is transformers sexy to him? I, oh, wow. There's a lot of questions I have for good old Nathaniel. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. <laughs> oh, they don't even give you like 16 seconds of preparation before they go from my name's Nathaniel and then they straight up and I'm in love with my car and they show him making out with his car. Oh my God, like not even warning or maybe, you know, a more beautiful image. You know, when you think of your friend and they get a new girlfriend, a boyfriend, you're like, oh, good for you. Imagine if the first thing they did was f each other. Like in front of you. This is disgusting. Ah, oh, man, I already got a picture of a guy tonguing his car in my head. This is not what I planned. God, there's the sound effects too. Morning, baby. Let me put my piston rod in your piston rod. Oh, God. He's gonna give the car a lube job. <laughs> this is disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... I was thinking to myself, I will not judge this man. And it's been 22 seconds. I'm so sorry, Nathaniel. I'm going to judge you throughout this. Nathaniel is in a committed relationship with a car. Uh, trust me, I've heard that and also seen it in that order. He met Chase in a resale lot about five years ago. He met Chase. He implying that the car like Lightning McQueen and has like autonomy of some sort. The car was like, ka you can come and ka -chow me. Do you think it started after he watched Cars? That was like the movie for him that was like, oh, Cars cars are sexy, goddamn. Remember at the start of Cars, uh, Lightning McQueen gets flashed by two gulls and those uh, quote unquote, you know, her, their chesticles. Oh, yeah. Do you think Nathaniel saw that and was like, damn, I like that. Do you think he had a girlfriend before this or a boyfriend before this and then now has a car and do you think his boyfriend or girlfriend knows about this and then is like, damn, you used to like me, now you like a car? Am I that good or that bad that you now have to bang cars? 
It was love at first sight. His body and then his interior and everything just together just seemed to fit. It's a gay car. It's a, I mean, well, this is already, like, it's just started and this is the hardest thing for me to digest. Probably just like how you and exhaust pipes. Do you blow the exhaust pipes? I don't, okay. So he loves his gay car. His car is, he's... He's a gay. Nathaniel's obsession first developed as a teenager when he would build model cars, but he didn't find true love until he met Chase. Yeah, I'm obsessed with Lego. It doesn't mean, you know, when the lights are off, I smack my ding dong on it. You know what I mean? I like a lot of things. There's only one thing I want to smack my dick on, but like, Jesus. Very disturbing to know that you were building car models and people were like, Ooh, it's got a lot of glue on it, Nathaniel. And Nathaniel's like, it's not glue. <laughs> It's like a never-ending source of comedy slash despair at the same time. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Just kind of caressing down the side. My initial reaction was I was kind of shocked. Kind of shocked? What is like utterly shocking? If this, she, Kind of shocked? Can you imagine Nathaniel being like, I'm in love with my car. She's like, oh. Well, that is the third most interesting thing I heard today. But this, but this is pretty good. Night friends don't seem to think it's too crazy, but all right. I, they're very liberal, loving friends of his. It was kind of weird because it was just hard to understand. Objectophilia is when a person develops a strong emotional and sensual relationship with an inanimate object. Inanimate meaning not alive. So, for instance, my glasses, if I were to suddenly be like, I love you, bro. <laughs> so it's like sort of a disorder here, or it's a condition. I write... This is not something that we should be judging, but TLC is proudly filming the worst parts of it and they know exactly how people are going to react to this. Honestly, I, I don't know why I feel the way I do, but I just absolutely love Chase. We always have such a good time together. Hold on, when this man is driving in the car, is he like, is that sex? Is that because he's in the car? What is what is the, what, when he takes passengers in the car, is it a threesome? Like. How does the rules work in the sexual car thing? How does he know it's a guy car? Does it have a pe- He likes a lot of the same music I do. We have a favorite song. It's uh, Can't Fight This Feeling by Ariel Speedwagon. Of course. <laughs> yeah, he likes a lot of the same music I do. If he had a choice, he probably wouldn't. My guy, Nathaniel. Pretty sure you're holding him hostage. This is borderline disgusting and mainly unsanitary. Please get someone to look at me the way Nathaniel looks at his car's exhaust pipe. Usually for his birthday, I try to do something special for him too. The favorite date would be going to the lookout area. It's my f okay. I love it. I love it. Can you imagine them at a lookout area and like there's a car next to him and there's like two people in the car just like, mwah, mwah, mwah. and then he's like, yeah, watch this, mwah, mwah, mwah. and he starts kissing his steering wheel and everyone's like, God damn, is she invisible? Or this? this guy's dating ghosts and shit. That's got to be the most trippy thing of all time, seeing a guy just like talking to his car, s sensually rubbing up on it while you're like next to your girlfriend or boyfriend looking at the horizon. Just lean against him a little and just be with him mainly. Love you. <laughs> like someone's in the next like car, like, I love you. Miriam, I, I love you, man. And he's right there like, Chase, I love you. You want to watch Cars when we go home? I'll put it on for you. It'll be dirty. <laughs> oh, oh, don't mind us. He, he just, he's just a little red. He's blushing. <laughs> but Nathaniel's relationship with Chase goes beyond dates and presents. We have our times when we get sexual. Ah, get the hell out, man. Get out, get out. This is, this, this is too much, entirely too much information. Chase. Nathaniel, stop. You're putting your... You guys are going to make the first Autobot... Auto... Is it an Autobot porno? What is this? What What are you trying to achieve with this? Why do you... Why do I need to know? Please. Does that feel good? You're a handsome man. Ah, oh, the music as well with it. He turned into like a super... Vo Does that feel good? You like that, huh? Chase, bend over for me. Call me daddy. Yeah, I'm going to be in the backseat. Yeah. I'm gonna give it to you from the backseat, Chase. I'm gonna get up in your exhaust pipe. I'm gonna pull the hood down. Mm. I'm gonna change all your oil right now. It's disgusting. Why didn't he become a mechanic? Oh, cause that would be, he'd probably be a pump, right? 
if he was a mechanic. This gets deeper and deeper every time. What we do the most often is I like to lean over his fender and across his hood and uh, do little things like that and uh, hey, hey, kind hey. Of press up against him Ew. and rub against him like that. Hey, stop doing it. One of his more bold positions is for me to be underneath him. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I can guarantee he'd be doing that and someone's like, oh my God, this dude's trapped. And they pull him out and then it's like ding dong is sticking out. They're like, God, what the hell is this? And he's like, please, sir, my husband and I are doing something right now. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hey, come on, Chase. Oh. This guy really, he, he really is in love with this car. I thought it was a bit... If you can go underneath your car and you're not trying to check for anything, you're in love with your car. It's very special to make love to Chase. I am worried for my friend because it's not normal and you may have people that don't understand. Nathaniel's so attached to Chase, he rarely lets anyone else drive him. Where is he going to go? What, does he just go? Is Chase going to have an argument and be like, I'm out of here? And then just stop. Is it like Knight Rider, the car? Because I don't think, <laughs> you don't have to let him out of your sight. If you just take away the keys, he can't leave. I know that sounds like disgusting, but we're talking about a car here. Also, he rarely lets people drive them. He does let people drive them. Chase and Nathaniel, not monogamous. It's car autonomous. What is this? What are we? Who are we? Who am I? Next time I say that's a beautiful car, I'm going to think of him. And then I'm going to think of how Nathaniel probably watches car channels and like has magazines of Lamborghinis and watches Top Gear. And everyone's like, God, why are you so turned on by Top Gear? And he's like, it's not the people, it's the cars. There have been times it brought tears to my eyes because I wasn't with him at work. His picture's on my desktop, so I see his face all the time. If something were to happen to Chase, I, I, my heart would just stop. I just have to gather myself here, I'm sorry. God damn it. He's, he's emotionally attached to this car. I feel like if I got hit by a bus, some I know some people would be like, eh, it's for the best. This guy, literally, he's like, oh, God. I cannot, I, can't, I don't know, do they make car-shaped coffins? I don't. I'm impressed that he's so invested in this car. Nathaniel's roommate, Kim, is one of the few people who know the full extent of his love life. I guess the reason I don't tell a lot of people is because I don't know the response I'm going to get. But Nathaniel's biggest fear is how his relationship could affect his career. Bruh, what? Are you... Nathaniel, it's on fucking TLC Discovery Channel. It's on YouTube. Everyone is going to know about Nathaniel. This is his problem. Is he stupid? This is the greatest problem with Nathaniel is not that he's in love with the car. is that he's stupid about it. If anyone found out about my car addiction that I'm having sex with my car, I don't know. I think I'd just lose my job. Hey, TLC, would you do a show on me fucking my car? Nathaniel, what? But I love him to death. I, I wouldn't trade him for the world. Good night, baby. I love you. Honestly, I can't even, like, the car has no face in something, but it feels, I think you can feel this as well, that the car is being held hostage against its wool. It doesn't even have a wool, but I feel like the car, if it had, like, sentience, would just ride away into the sunset. I, just, I feel like someone needs to rescue that car. 27-year-old Nathaniel has been in an intimate relationship with his car, Chase, for nearly five years. His car lasted longer than my longest relationship. I had a four-year relationship. His car lasted five. Mm. I'm gonna hear about this from my mom. She's gonna look at me and be like, yeah, why don't you be more like Nathaniel and his car? Huh? Can't hold a relationship? Nathaniel and his car can. Learned about how Nathaniel will hold up when people find out about his relationship and wants Nathaniel to get help. When he first told me, I was a little shocked, but when I told him I'll always accept you as a friend, but not everybody in this world is the same. If a stranger walked up to you, how would you describe what exactly it is you have with Chase? We have an intimate relationship as far as emotionally and sexually. I think the follow-up question for most people would be how which would be a very valid question because I don't know how you can have an emotional relationship with an inanimate object. I, I don't even know why you have a sexual one. How many times do you think this guy goes to the car dealership and is that his strip club? Every time he tests drive a car, it's like a brothel. Let that sink in. 
When he watches Taxi Driver, he probably likes the movie for the taxi. When he watches Fast and the Furious, he probably busts a nut every time, and it's not the Vin Diesel. I was just kind of interested if you'd be willing to see a therapist. Maybe this therapist can help you deal with the other people that think that you shouldn't be like this. I feel lucky to have Kim in my life as a friend. I am worried for Nathaniel. Wow, they didn't even answer that question. She was like, do you think you should see a therapist? And he's like, I'm lucky to have you in my life, Kim. I'm going to give you a hug now and get back to my car. He hugged her like, like a man who's in love with his car, and his car would get jealous if he ever saw him with another woman. Could you further be away from your friend and hug them? Jesus. If I had radioactive energy on me, I would hug my friend a little closer than that. My God, Chase. I mean, Nathaniel, I get their names mixed up because they look the same. It's a man. They've kept their romance a secret from most people. But today... So today, the big announcement happens. Nathaniel is finally telling someone important about his car-banging lifestyle. And guess who he's telling? It's Daddy. Nathaniel has decided to reveal everything to his father. I don't know exactly what it's about, but I'd like to know. I'm, uh... I'm just going to come out and say it, I guess. I'm in an uh, intimate relationship with Chase. You're in an intimate relationship with your car. Oh, he knows that Chase is the car. OK, well, we've got one thing out of the road. You're talking about the car while you're rubbing it up and down, man. I don't know. Is this this is kinky. Sexually with your car? Yes. Your car? Yes. I don't. How does that work? How can you have sex with a car? Don't. Why do you? Why would you ask? That? That's the first question, Daddy. Daddy, yo, how does that work, son? Your mother annoys me. How does that? Tell me how it works. Exhaust a hole's a hole, son. I know exactly. <laughs> why would that be the first question you ask, White Morpheus? Mainly, it's just a lot of just rubbing up against him. Okay. Um, certain and it involves masturbating as well. Why would you tell your dad this? There's like a line, bro. Like even in normal relationships, you know? That's like crossing a line even if you're like in love with your car. You could leave it at that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so you you rub up against it or I mean not I, I guess like right now, you're does this turn you on? Yes. What are you actually doing, sir? What in God's church are you doing? What? Are you do you need notes on this? Really? I can't, I don't understand what your line of thought is. What are you quizzing your son on, really? So you, you rub up on it with your with your balls, huh? Stop asking questions, and, and damn it, Nathaniel, stop answering them. It's hard to comprehend him sitting in a car somewhere and masturbating to it. Don't, why are you thinking about that, bro? His dad is way too intrusive. Or with it? I don't know. I guess it's, it's disbelief. But at the same time, he's my son. Was it because of the divorce between me and your mom that did any of this? Are you going to seriously blame yourself for this? Was it because I divorced your mom? Because I can get that bitch back. Will you start, like, having sex with people if I get your mom back? I, I feel like that may have played a small part in it. I mean, it wasn't your fault and it wasn't mom's fault. We just couldn't spend a lot of time. I mean, I don't condemn you over it. I just don't understand. That's my biggest thing. Right. Damn, this is turning into a whole therapy session. I didn't see that coming. The dad actually blamed himself and said, I'm sorry I wasn't the best. And he was like, yeah, you guys got divorced, so I started banging my car. Yeah, have you ever thought about seeing somebody? And I don't mean that in a mean way, but you think about it? I mean, yeah. I'd be OK with that. My dad actually reacted a lot better than, I, than I'd hoped. I know he has his doubts as far as he doesn't quite understand. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you be really worried if he answered, like, hey, dad, um, I'm sleeping in my car. And then he was like, yeah, me too. This is the literal best result that could have ever happened. He doesn't fully understand it, but he accepts you. Nathaniel has some great people in his life. Everyone there is like, sleeping with your car? Okay. All right. I still like you. Nathaniel must be a great guy or something. So after <clears throat> convincing his dad and telling his dad his sex life of this car, his dad surprisingly has a honest conversation with him and is accepting of the fact this man is in love with this car. So at the moment, we have a 27-year-old who's in a great relationship with this car because it can't say no because it's a car. His roommate loves his car and him, I guess, and his dad is okay with it. He's got a pretty good life, I would say. 
But Nathaniel's father is worried how his unusual romance will affect his life. Have you ever had a, a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend? I've had girlfriends in the past, yeah, and they, it's always been hard. It's never worked out, I guess, because of that piece of me is still attached to cars. <laughs> I said it earlier, but can you imagine Nathaniel like saying like, Melissa, I'm leaving you. Nathaniel, for who? You don't need to know. All you need to know is I'm leaving. The person that I'm in love with is right outside. And then he just goes into his car and she's like so confused. Where, what, who, what? And it never hits her until years later when the show comes out and she's like, damn, I got left for a car. Sounds like an alpha male. He's got that grind set because he's got a car on his mind. Such a materialistic man, but he's not. He's emotionally attached to that beautiful, beautiful chase. So one of the things that is really kind of a new field of understanding is that this may be what we call an orientation, essentially heterosexual and, and homosexual. And then there's what we call a objectum sexual, that people have a desire for relationships with objects. I feel I'm gonna have to face those situations where people are making fun and I'll try to deal with those the best as I can as they come but I don't want to make any changes I feel a long happy relationship with Chase and I'm very proud of that well he leaves the psychiatrist's office and he's like my relationship is great with my car I might have to face an uphill battle dealing with the people hating on me for loving my car but that's because they don't love theirs and the end card says Nathaniel's relationship with Chase is stronger than ever <laughs> He plans to continue seeing the therapist. This is, this is the greatest two sentences that contradict each other. Imagine saying like, my relationship with Mary is stronger than ever. We're going to continue seeking marriage counseling to try and get it right though. But it's never been stronger. But if the therapist said, if we have one more hiccup, he's going he's gonna to sign the divorce papers himself. Yeah. The first sexual urges I had towards him weren't really right off the bat. I'd say we probably started the sexual probably about a year after we met. Wow, he waited. Uh, Chase must be a devout religious car. Didn't believe in sex before taking him home to his other cars, tractors, and tow truck parents. I understand. I, I value that in a car. The first time we ever got intimate was when I was at home, and it was late at night, I guess. It was pretty dark outside, and uh, it was really special. Well, <clears throat> that's the end of the episode. And for a long time, people were like, okay, this is the dude who just fell in love with this car. No harm, no foul. He is moving on. He is in a happy relationship with his car. Well, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is 10 years later, we meet up with Nathaniel again. The bad news is that Chase is not the car that he's in love with anymore. Well, he kind of is, but let Nathaniel explain it. It is 2023 and Nathaniel is ready to talk about his new love and affection and what happened to Chase. This is TLC. My name is Nathaniel. I live in a small rural town in Texas. Wow, Nathaniel really looking like a dad now. Wonder if he had little car babies, little carlets. Aw, Scarlet the Carlet. <laughs> and when you last saw me a decade ago, I was in an intimate relationship with my car, Chase. Unfortunately, Chase is no longer part of my life. Holy shit. He broke up with Chase. <gasps> but that's not actually true. This is what happened. Four years ago, Chase was involved in a serious accident during a routine checkup. Oh my god, they killed Chase. Damn, that's not routine at all. The mechanic was probably jealous and killed that car. Did they have a funeral? Did they drive a walk? This is like the Titanic, but Leonardo DiCaprio fucks the ship. Oh my God, that's why they call it a relationship. <laughs> Still think about it a lot. It's, it breaks my heart he's not here. I just, I felt like he deserved better. This looks like a mafia shooting, bro. This doesn't, this looks like a hit job. This is not a normal car death. Someone, the mafia killed your car. He owed them a lot of gaskets or something, bro. This is an inside job, brother. This is where I keep a lot of Chase's mementos. The bedroom is just a, a special place and I felt like that was the perfect place for him and nice to have him close to me. You, you look back and you just don't realize the things you take for granted until it's too late. Oh, oh he's crying, he's crying again. 
<laughs> this is like he actually is the most emotional he's a very emotionally available man and the car has taught him that that's fantastic i don't i've never seen someone cry this much over a car before this is the love of his life right there and he died that's crazy i just would change i guess the way things happened or to try to do something different i guess to keep him here in my life Nathaniel, I'm going to tell you what I tell everyone. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you can't shift the course of fate because it is a train that you just cannot derail. The best you can do is shift the train tracks very minorly, but they all lead to the same path. But I'm going to tell you something specifically, Nathaniel. Don't fuck the train. You do not need to be doing anything else to the train. Thank you. Oh my god, it looks like the car is literally ramming him from behind. This is... <sighs> I am now in an intimate relationship with my car, Lex. Oh my god, there's the bombshell. He said he would never move on, and he lied. Woman, men lie. Not just about other women, but about other cars. Ugh, who is Lex? Probably a bitchy Lexus. It is a bitchy Lexus. Chase, I was looking for new vehicles and I saw one just like her parked. You disgust me. Your partner dies and you look for a new one right there and then you go to the car lot. Shit, if my wife died, I wouldn't go to the strip club the next day. I would wait two, three, four hours, maybe five. Men, am I right? Ugh. It's like her parked in front of the restaurant and I was like, man, she's beautiful. And I actually started looking that same day and found one just like her. That's unbelievable. So you saw a car outside when you were eating food and you said, I'm going to get one like it. You just, you disgust me. I, I cannot believe you would talk about the love of your life like that. Why didn't you get another chase? Why didn't you get that? You know, they made many of him. I just want to go on record and say that wasn't the only car that looked like that. Nathaniel, I don't mean to be rude, but you could have replaced Chase. So with vehicles, I tend to place gender based on looks. Chase had more of a male look to me. And Lex, with her lights and stuff, she just has more of a curved appeal. And so she kind of resembles more of a woman. So he's not a gay car man. He's, he's all inclusive or maybe bisexual car man. And also, I just want to say, he, that's a black car. He's dating a black car lady. That's, that's cute. Inter mechanic. She's got a cute little, her cheeks and stuff, as I call it, kind of in this area. Her headlights, for one, she just has beautiful eyes. She's got a cute butt to me, I think. I like how her taillights. <laughs> oh, man. No matter where you are, you got to like that ass, you know? Whether you like a car, a woman, or a donkey, you got to love that ass. <laughs> just really look on her. My favorite thing is her interior. I just love her seats. It's just very, she does have a really nice smell to her. I just can't imagine life without her. Ah, uh, you said that about Chase, you dirty bastard how dare you i i have come to love and you know appreciate your relationship with chase you in 10 years time you can change like that what the unbelievable you dirty dirty man you vowed to chase you would never love another now you loved her lexus of all things my goodness have some decency fellow I'm going to go ahead and give Lex a bath. I like to use warm water because it's with the cold hose water, it kind of offsets it a little bit. Lex is a 2003 luxury sedan. 2003? So she's 20. Legal. Legal. I, I, you know what? I'll let you off with that one. Okay. But you just called your car baby girl. It's the same thing that dude from 365 days. Ah, baby girl. Lex is a little dirty right now, but even in her own way, she's sexy when she's dirty. She's sexy when she's dirty. This is, we're talking about a car. She's sexy when she's dirty. Ah, uh, she's a bit clean. She's my baby girl. She's sexy when she's dirty. I clean her up. Come on, let daddy shower you with love and affection and also rub myself on you. God damn. I'm gonna turn on the radio, man. 
Some people would call me gay for being with Chase, and probably some people call me straight for being with Lex. But I mean, I'm, I guess it'd be an objectum sexual. I'm not call you any of those things. Every time you're too close to my car, then I worry. Is this man looking at me or is he looking at my car? Is he impressed that I have this car or is he impressed that my car has me inside it? My name is Dr. Kevin Chapman. I'm a psychologist, and I've been studying and working in the area of strange behavior for over 20 years. For Nathaniel, being in relationships with various vehicles essentially prevents you from having long-lasting, meaningful relationships with people. He, he studied for 20 years to get to that conclusion. D Dr. Kevin, I could have told you that in five seconds. This man fucks his car. It's going to be very hard to maintain you know, social relationships or understand social norms when you are actively going towards your car and getting turned on by it. Not very many people are going to be sympathetic if someone is having a relationship with an inanimate object of any sort because what it implies is that you don't have the ability or the capacity to have these relationships. I think about Chase every day, but, you know, Lex is my... She's my main squeeze. She's my baby girl now. And... <laughs> she's my main squeeze. My new car is my new car. You know what I mean? Damn, he's a player. Shit, he's playing the field. And by field, I mean the racetrack. You know, I just love her as much as I did him. <laughs> Baby girl. Oh, not the, not, not the GoPro close-ups. This looks like a fish feeding time. Stop, this is too close, man. Why'd they put the GoPro there? They did, they did him dirty. You smell good. I love you. So Lex is not the only love that I have in my life. Oh! <laughs> oh! My boy! Did you see that ending? Lex is not the only love I have in my life. <laughs> you think she the only one? Damn, the look that he gave, like, oh, think I just got one? I get him every day. They can't say no to me. But uh, Lex is not the only love that I have in my life. I now have Jordan, which is a luxury sedan. He's very luxurious, very gentlemanly to me. Uh, so I show affection for Jordan in a lot of ways. I mean, I've, I've, we've been intimate. <laughs> He's, oh, God damn. It's a friends with benefit. It's not, it's not even in a relationship with this car. He's straight up like, yeah, fuck you some days, okay? I'm sorry, I can't catch feelings with you. I'm I'm with Lex right now, and Chase is on my mind. You use hot. You got them nice grills, but I don't I don't like you like that. So this is Jet. He's very. He's just kind of more of more manly, I guess you could say, since he's more of an SUV type. I just like driving him too, but he also is very helpful. Um, he gets to help me with with Adam. So my PWC, with Adam, it's actually nice because you kind of get to, the way you get to ride him is, you kind of get to wrap your legs around him. I, I, I don't want to hear you talk about intimacy on a jet ski. The last person on I'm a jet ski was DJ Khaled, and this is just not a good mix that's going on in my mind right now. We used to spend a lot more time on the lake. It's been a while, uh, poor guy. Well, I'm hoping to get back to that as soon as possible. But yeah, I guess my family has gotten bigger over the past decade. I mean, I have a few more vehicles to take care of, which I which I enjoy doing. That's not your family, bro. You just you just a pump daddy. This is your this is your family would be kids and stuff. You have little mini vehicles going around, like those little vehicles that you put like batteries in. Those are the things. But you got you ain't got a family. You got cars with benefits, man. Cars with features. Oh my god. Nathaniel's favorite vehicle is still Lex. He takes her out on multiple dates per week. Well, at least he's a gentleman. The loving spark hasn't gone. But, you know, it's just difficult having multiple vehicles kind of devoting my time. So I like to save the weekends for Lex. I usually drive somewhere with her to get something to eat. Does he feed the car? Does he, like, put a hamburger, or, like, in the engine? And the car just blows up. How does he feed? Does he feed the car? Does he just put it in the steering wheel? Most people may get like a bouquet of flowers or something for their their loved one. But you know, one night I was heading home and I was just like, she was getting low. And I, Why not? I'd get her some ethanol for gas. And I just if somewhere would happen with Lex, I, I, my heart would just stop. I try to keep her up with the mechanic. I mean, I try to keep her as best as she can be, and uh, change her oils and stuff like that, and check her fluids. We're taking Lex to a local mechanic to get her looked at. I just want to make sure she's in the best condition that she can be. I just, like, the comparisons are just almost 
unbelievably funny in all the wrong ways. I was watching another episode of TLC, and most of these people go to like doctors because uh, oftentimes they do things that are harmful to their body, and the doctors are like, eat. This guy, he's taking her to a mechanic, which is basically his version of the doctors. That's her doctor is the mechanic. It's just, wow. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good. How are you? How can I help you? Hey, I'm Nathaniel, and I was just wanting to maybe just see about getting my car checked up for okay. the summer. Hey, I'm Nathaniel. Yeah, I know you. You're the one who kissing on his car every time I see you, you kiss on everybody's cars. Cool. Sounds good. Let's go get the car checked in for you. Okay. When I take Lexa to the mechanic, I get a little nervous because, I mean, I, they don't fully understand. Who, the mechanics? I don't, yeah, you're right, Nathaniel. I don't think they would. You should be nervous because when the mechanic comes back, he's like, everything seems okay. There's a lot of sticky substance in the back seat. I don't know what that is. Couldn't we, my mechanic couldn't find it, but he said he quits. There you go. All right. We'll get it brought up. I don't get jealous when people touch Lex. As long as it's respectful. Ah, uh, so, so if someone was like, oh, yeah, Lex, you like that? <clears throat> someone was like that, then he'd defend her honor. I'd like to see that. Maybe see if she has any, any issues or anything maybe that's underlying that I don't know about. What else we got? Oh, he's looking up her skirt, man. You better defend her honor. He is looking up her. He's not, a, he's not even a specialist. He's just a normal mechanic. He's not a guy mechanic. He's he's a normal one, bro. You better check. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. He's looking right up her pipes. I'm a little nervous knowing she's back there, and you know I don't know. These people don't know her like I do or love her like I do. So it's 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 just you know I hope she's okay. Yeah. Imagine she's getting railed by these two mechanics. Okay. They're using things other than screwdrivers. They're pile driving her, but not in the WWE way right now. Hello, sir. You got the Lexus? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm Chris. Nothing. I'm just looking you. at your lovely vehicle out here. Oh. What'd you call it? Lovely vehicle? You were looking at it. You touching it? How dare you talk about my wife like that? Thank you. Uh, the biggest concern that I would have, the okay. oil pan is leaking a little bit, as well as you have a transmission leak. Right. Not enough that it is dripping on the floor yet, it's just something to keep in mind. Okay. Other than that, looks like you've been taking care of it pretty good. Looks like there's something leaking out of the car. A lot of dripping. A lot. This is a lot of leaking liquid. Looks like it's not oil. It's mixed with oil, though. It's your jizz, sir. Hey, it looks like you're doing pretty Thank good. Thank you job. for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we found out some news about Lex. It's some concerning stuff, but I'm glad that she's looked at now, and that's stuff that I can get addressed for. So Lex gets a pretty clean bull of health. She's got a few problems. I guess that's like. Hepatitis for cause, copatitis, and, uh, but, you know, nothing that a little lube won't fix, a little lube job, be fine. But all in all, it's it's nice to hear that, you know, that they thought it took, been taken good care of her, so that actually, actually made me feel good. I love my legs, girl. She's a sweet girl. <laughs> he ends, uh, by sweet-talking his car and then giving a <laughs> laugh, and that is how... Nathaniel ends his journey and we haven't seen him for 10 years. We might not see him for 10 more years This is this is where he stands. So in the 10 years that we've learned off Nathaniel We know that he fell in love with a car called Chase. Chase died He then made another car love out of Lex who's now a girl. He's grown up as a man I don't know what happened to his roommate. She probably left his dad I don't know if he's okay with another car and the therapist. I don't know if that's doing anything. What I do know is that, weirdly enough, he's not technically breaking any laws or not hurting anyone. So in terms of my strange addiction, it's definitely strange, but it's not necessarily unhealthy. And I know I say that with a grain of salt, but he doesn't seem to be hurting anyone and he seems to be a relatively okay guy. So he's 39 years old. Instead of doing the conventional thing and getting married to a person, he, he might be trying to legalize courage. And, you know, I, for one, will say, okay. Because I'll tell you what, if I get married and it doesn't work out, I myself might turn to cars. Who knows? I think I've been watching too much TLC, My Strange Addiction. That was the deep dive of Nathaniel and his car. A truly amazing love story. Shakespeare himself couldn't write some shit like that. Because he's not on acid. If there's one thing that you need to know today after watching this, it's that maybe you're single out there. And you are thinking, I don't know what it is. 
how can I find a person? Here's an inspirational quote for you. Just know that if you are lonely in this world and you feel like really, really sad about not finding a partner, this guy has a car and he's more in love than you. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, I love you all. Take care. Hopefully um, we'll get to do more of these, but uh, I was joking. Take care. Bye. Down.